I'm Danielle Downey. I'm the executive director of Project APISM, and one of the projects that we're supporting right now is a breeding project to select viral resistant bees. We breed those bees in Hawaii and we're field testing them here in Jamestown, North Dakota this year for the first time. So it's an early trial, but we're really excited to have it going and to be getting some data on these bees. Varroa is the worst thing to happen to bees in our lifetime. Easily the worst thing. It's a terrible parasite. On you or I, it would be like a tick the size of a dinner plate, poking a hole, feeding on our blood, vectoring virus and, and bacteria and pathogens. And it's just a really terrible parasite. Varroa is interesting because it's a um, very large parasite. It's obvious, but the really insidious health effects occur because these mites transmit viruses not only transmit it, but somehow stimulate the virus to replicate. So these colonies typically die when they have high levels of varroa because of these viruses killing the bees. It's an amazing thing to realize that every colony of bees in this country is likely to be infested with varroa. And if the mites aren't dealt with, that colony will die. So it's a serious health threat, probably the primary health threat to our bees. is so deadly that beekeepers knew that if they didn't kill Varroa, the Varroa was going to kill their colonies. And so early on we used a lot of pesticides, chemical control of Varroa, but the Varroa mites have developed resistance. So once we find a chemical that's highly selective against Varroa, that pressure actually causes the Varroa population to develop resistance to the, the chemical. So beekeepers need more tools to address Varroa problems. Breeding varroa resistant bees is, is great because it's a bee that can help themselves. So this is a behavior where the bee can sense under that capping that the varroa mite is trying to reproduce. They open the capping and it interrupts the varroa's reproductive cycle. So it keeps the populations low. So having a bee that can help themselves is an obvious advantage. That's a great solution. The project has to do with breeding bees to be resistant to the mites by using their own defense mechanisms. We know that this thing happens in bees. We've been working on this sort of thing for a long time at the USDA laboratory that I'm with in Louisiana. The problem is, although we can make bees resistant, we really haven't cracked the nut of making them both resistant and productive for commercial beekeepers. So this breeding project is trying to wed those two things, resistant bees with very productive bees. Beekeepers are really looking for some very specific common traits. We like to have bees that are good honey producers. We like to have bees that overwinter well with large populations so that we can pollinate almonds and other fruits and vegetables in the springtime. We like to have bees that are docile so we don't have to worry about being a nuisance to the public. And we really like bees that are resistant to disease and pests like varroa mites. So what we need is a bee that's more commercially valuable that can do, that can make honey, that's gentle, that's prolific, that's a good pollinator, that builds up early in the year, uh, that doesn't eat too many stores over the winter. So in all in all, it has to be a bee that's valuable in every way, including that. So that it has to be an additional attribute of the bee and not take something else away. The success of this project depends on first us breeding the proper type bee. And then a very important part of this is us somehow taking those genetics and delivering them to the end users, the beekeepers, through the proper genetics in both the queens and the mates, the drones that are producing the colonies of bees. The way I like to look at this is that what we're really trying to do is stimulate beekeepers to try these bees. And success would be if there's a significant amount of adoption by this type of bee by the industry. This is a project that's been going on for two years. And this, this field test it represents the first test in a commercial beekeeping operation to see how the bees fare. I'd say five frames of bees in the top. Oh. Nice patch of brood though, look at that pattern. That's probably like a four, huh? Yeah. We're not just measuring for Varroa in this field trial, although we are sampling to see how much Varroa pressure is in the colony. We're also sampling for viruses and other pathogens. We're measuring the brood. We are scoring the brood for the quality of the brood pattern. We're counting the frames of adult bees and we're measuring the honey that we're 
pulling off and harvesting from each colony. 46. Eight. Number one. 20.6. Uh, 14. Okay. Nine. 52.6. Is that a one? Yeah. In beekeeping, if we want to be able to be sustainable, we need to be able to think long term. And another chemical is just going to be another small hurdle for the Varroa mites. If we want to get to sustainability, then we need to have something that is genetic. So we need to support breeding programs that will give us a better bee. When VSH bees are available, then we would be more than happy to use them uh, in our stock. Anything that we can do to make the product we sell better, uh, that's going to be better for our industry, better for our customers, better for our own business. This is a good project for the USDA because the, the agency's mission is to conduct science in support of agriculture. So this is, this is the perfect public-private partnership to do the research, do the breeding, and try to make an end product that will benefit the beekeeping industry. The ideal outcome would be to create a bee that side by side has all the benefits of all of the other breeding projects that have delivered commercial beekeepers good honey production, good winter viability, and good brood rearing, while at the same time taking care of Varroa without chemical treatments. I'm really hopeful about it. When you're breeding and selecting bees, a lot of times you just find this colony that is so good in, in every way. Every way you look at it, she's just like a shining star. And when you see that, you know the potential is really there. You just have to keep sifting and working and dedicate yourself to allowing that potential to come out. So I'm really hopeful.